All right. So, like Julie said, um, my my radio stuff was kind of like my version of a zine, which was zines were really important to me when I was like coming up in punk rock, and in particular this one. It's called Murder Can Be Fun. Um, it was uh, <laughs> it was <laughs> made by a guy named John Marr. And uh, he's based in San Francisco. I became friends with him later on. And it was the first zine that I ever had that wasn't related to music. I used to get um, Maximum Rock and Roll and stuff to, to get figure out what seven inches to buy and mail order them, and I'd get them. And um, it was a big part of my life. And he wrote these long, really well-researched stories about, um, about death and crime and mayhem in very cool ways. And I was really impressed by him. And when I was devising my first show in uh, 2002. Uh, it's called in it was called Invisible Ink. You might notice a trend there. <laughs> um, it was about, uh, I, I wanted to create a punk rock This American Life. That's what I wanted. I wanted to get like a zine based This American Life. So I called it Invisible Ink, a radio zine. And uh, John Marr was on my first episode. And so this zine was uh, really pivotal. The other one that was really pivotal to me is a was a zine called Beer Frame, which was did really tiny details about um, packages and lots of you might call it design details about mundane things in the world. Um, it was written by a guy called Paul Lucas, who now runs UniWatch, which is also a very very detailed, uh, just very obsessive uh, web now you know website about that stuff. So zines were a huge part of my life. 